Hi third grade and welcome to today in music. We are going to be doing a lot of different fun stuff today. We're gonna to work with some music notes. We're gonna do some percussion using our bodies and also some random around the house instruments. We're gonna learn about our holiday of the week which is Hanukkah and we are going to work on our, oops, upside down, artist of the month, Stevie Wonder. So let's get started with that. All right, hi guys. Today for our concept of the day, we're gonna be learning about some types of music notes. Um, if you had me in October or November, this is probably a little bit of a review for you, but we could all use that review. So in music, we have different symbols that mean different things. But to start with, for standard music, there's lots of different types. This is the standard. Standard music is cut into four. This is called a time signature and it's four, four. So what that means is that any little chunk of music, music is cut into a chunk of four different beats every single time. If it's in 4-4, four, four. there's other types like 3-4, but we're gonna focus on 4-4. Four, four. So when a music note is cut into four chunks, or music measure, that chunk is called, what I, like I said, a measure. And a measure of music, each time you have measured music, it's gonna be filled up with four beats in any arrangement, in any different kind of like long, or short, up to the composer and who is writing the music. We're gonna learn about a couple of notes today that could go into these four chunks of music. So, to start with, we're gonna start with what's called a whole note. And a whole note, it's kind of like an O. If you can see, it just kinda of looks like an O with like some thicker sides. A whole note is called a whole note because it fills up the whole measure the whole chunk of music. So a whole note is worth four beats because it fills up the whole four beat measure. So a whole note then you hold onto for four beats. The way I like to clap out a whole note is I like to go one, two, three, four. Do with me one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because if you see, I start that note with a clap, but then I keep, I hold on to it. And if I had like an instrument, I would go, or my voice even, I go, ah. That sound is continuous for all four of those beats, that ah. Okay? So that's a whole note. It's called a whole note because it fills up the whole measure of four beats. So you hold a whole note out for four beats. Next up, we have what is called a half note. Now, I want you to think about this in terms of like math, right? If a whole note is worth four beats, how many beats do you think a half note would be worth? A half note would be worth two, because four, half of that is two. Two times two is four. If you cut a four and a half, if you had four apples, cut it in half, you'd have two on each side. Two, a half note is worth two beats. Now, it also means that it fills up half of a measure or half of a four beat chunk of music, which means that you could put two half notes into a measure. So the way I would clap out a half note is I would go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Or if I was to do like a whole measure, I could do one, two, three, Four. And the way that would sound is be like, ah, ah. If you can hear it, it's two beats that I'm holding out my voice for. Two beats. If you were playing a wind instrument like a recorder, a clarinet, a trumpet, you would be able to make that sound with your instrument. But for now, I'm just using my voice. So that's a half note. It is two beats in a measure. The final one that we're gonna learn about today, we'll learn about more, but today we're just gonna focus on these three, is this one. This one is called, oops, a quarter note. And a quarter note is worth one beat. Here's how I like to remember what a quarter note is. First of all, let's take a look at a quarter note versus a half note. Look at what differences you see there. They look pretty similar. If you're thinking size, the size is the same. It might have printed differently. But a half note looks exactly the same as a quarter note, but the half note just isn't colored in. They both have the circle 
and the stems coming out of that circle. But the circle for the half note is not filled in, while the circle for the quarter note is. If you look at a whole note, the whole note isn't filled in either. So whole note and half note, not filled in. Quarter note, on the other hand, with that stem, is filled in completely black. A quarter note is worth one beat. Here's how I like to remember that a quarter note is worth one beat. If I think about quarters in terms of money, how many quarters go into a dollar? Let's see, 25, 50, 75, 100. There's four quarters in a dollar, just like there's four beats in a measure. So because there is four quarters in a dollar, there's also four quarter notes in a measure, or a quarter of four equals one. Because one out of four, a quarter. So a quarter note is worth one beat. So the way I would clap out a quarter note would just be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So very simple, very um, just clapping out those beats, right? That is a quarter note. Now, when we move on to our body percussion or our percussion section next, you're gonna notice that you wouldn't be able to do a whole note with drumsticks or with your um, whatever tool that I'm having third grade use. You wouldn't be able to do this. Why? If I tap my drumstick, the sound doesn't last for four beats. The sound can only make one short sound. So I can't do a whole note or a half note because it can't also can't make two seconds of sound. It just one single beat. I can't make a whole note and I can't make a half note with percussion. I would need a wind instrument, which means that like an instrument that you play with your mouth, like a clarinet, a trombone, a French horn, to be able to hold out that sound for that amount of time. So when we do drumming, we're gonna focus a lot on quarter notes and also eighth and sixteenth notes, which we will learn about next week. So let's move on then to our percussion section to kind of get started figuring out how to work with these notes in these four beat meshes of music. See you there. Hi, third grade. Uh, when you guys are in the classroom and we do rhythm activities, we are going to be doing something called body percussion. If we were in person learning right now, I would have you guys using rhythm sticks to drum out with me. But because we're at home and we don't have those materials with us, we're going to be doing a combination of body percussion and using items like highlighters or pencils or markers to do some percussion work. So what body percussion is, is body percussion is when you use any part of your body to make a drumming beat. So body percussion can be clapping. Body percussion can be patting on your legs. Can be snapping. It could just be anything. It could be patting your head. Body percussion is anything that you want it to be. It can also be stomping. Stomp, 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 stomp. I live in an apartment, so I'm not gonna stomp right now because it's nighttime when I'm filming this. So that's what per body percussion is. When you're finished with our video lesson, you're actually going to see a really, really cool video about what exactly body percussion is and how cool it can be used in music. Um, another example I would like to think about is Patrick Starr when he likes to do his belly drumming. That's also technically body percussion. So today, though, we are going to use uh, writing utensils for our body percussion. So if you could pause the video and go get two writing utensils. I have two highlighters here, but you can get like pencils, markers, whatever works. I wouldn't say crayons because crayons are too short. Any regular size writing utensils. Go ahead and pause and go grab those now. All right, let's get started with some drumming. So we're gonna start what I call, with what I call a level one or a steady beat when we drum. So when we drum, um, I wouldn't do it on a table just because 
if you heard that that's pretty loud and you might be in a house with your parent working or with grandma working or maybe baby sister's taking a nap, we wanna do it somewhere quiet. So I would find like a carpet to do it on. This is young on my desk right here. I have a towel laid down and I also have a piece of foam on top of it. So that way that sound is a little bit more quiet. So I would find a nice quiet space to do that in where you're not gonna bother anybody. I wouldn't do it on like um, a table for that reason. So let's, again, like I said, start with that study B, that level one study B. So study B is when you do the same thing over and over again. Now join me and make sure that you're following the exact same time that I am. So I don't want you to kind of, kind of fall off onto this. Join me and kind of make sure that you're keeping the exact same time. So we're going hit, 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 hit. Good. And that is a steady beat. It stays the exact same. And that steady beat is also our first measure of music. These are quarter notes like we explained earlier. So that steady beat is actually a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So level one, our steady B is quarter notes. Kind of cool, right? Now we're going to learn what a level two is because level two is or level three, which is, but we're going to learn about those next week. So Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna play some rhythms together. And what this means is I'm gonna play a pattern for you. You're gonna repeat it back to me. And when, uh, and I think it's next week, I'm gonna have you guys make up your own rhythms. Cause if we were in class, I would have you guys make your own rhythms and then the whole class would try it together. It's a lot of fun. But because we're virtual, I'm gonna have you guys do that on Flipgrid instead. So. I'm gonna make some patterns for you to try and I want you to repeat after me, ready? So I'm gonna start with this. Long, 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 short, 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 short. Ready, go. Long, 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 short, 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 short. So really what I'm doing is I'm going quarter, 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 short, 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 short. Okay, let's try that backwards. Short, 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 long, 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 short, 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 long, 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 long. Very good. This is one of my favorite beats to do, and this one you'll actually do for your drum along next week, which we will explain. This is called, well, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called until after, ready? So you're gonna go hit, hit. Do you know what song that's from? That's from We Will Rock You. We'll do more with that next week, but it's a lot of fun to do that in class. I know that my fourth graders miss best class. They love to just do We Will Rock You over and over and over again. So let's do now one more. Let's see if you can figure out what this is from. So I'm going da 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 da. You try, ready? Go. Da 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 da. Do you know what that's from? If you're kind of like, mm, I think I know it, but I'm not sure. That's from Mario. So da 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 da. But that's that rhythm. It's one and two and three four and one and da 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 da. So that's the rhythm that you're gonna try on your own. What's gonna happen now is after we are done here, you are going to see on your assignment that you are gonna one, watch that body percussion video I was telling you about, cause it is so awesome to see the cool music that they can make with their bodies. And then you're also going to try a body percussion play along. So it's gonna be a song called The Greatest Show, which is from the movie The Greatest Showman, if you've ever seen it, it's like a circus movie. Um, very cool, it's like a musical. But in it, it's going to show you pictures of like stomp, Claps, stomp, claps, or stomp, shh, stomp, shh. It's gonna show you, in fact, let me show you this. It's gonna show you this. This is called a rest note, which we will talk about more later. But it's gonna show you this rest, and when you see this rest, you're gonna go shh. So it's gonna show you like a picture of a clap, and then a shh, clap, shh. 
and you're gonna follow along to the song using those body percussion rhythms. All right, I hope you guys have a fun time with that. See you later. Hi everyone and welcome to our holiday of the week portion of our lesson. This week we are going to be focusing on the holiday of Hanukkah. There may be quite a few of you in our school that celebrate this lovely holiday. This holiday is actually a holiday from Judaism, which means that if you are someone that is Jewish, you may celebrate Hanukkah. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hanukkah. I'm going to show you some of the things that they kind of do and I'll show you a Hanukkah song. So let's get started. To start, I want you guys to know that instead of being one day like Christmas is or um, like Thanksgiving is, Hanukkah spreads out over eight whole days. It's like a really long celebration, which is really cool. Um, it's an eight day celebration that starts in December. It kind of varies on the days. It's based on like this really ancient uh, calendar that they have that tells us what days of the year it's going to be on. But this year Hanukkah is from December 10th to December 18th. So that's coming up uh, about next week. So it's a holiday about rededication. If you think about rededication, what could that possibly mean? Well, I know that dedication is when I work really hard or like if I dedicated a book to someone, it means that I'm telling you that I did this for you. Like if I said this book was written for blah, 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 I'd be dedicating the book to you. So it means rededication in the sense that um, Jewish religion was temporarily outlawed at one point. Um, instead, they were forced to celebrate and uh, kind of worship Greek gods instead. You weren't allowed to practice being a Jewish person at that time. Uh, but then, oh, well, actually, sorry, backtrack. Uh, they were celebrated in the Jewish temple as well. So instead of celebrating like their own religion in their temple, they had to practice someone else's religion in their temple, which to me, it's... Um, that's kind of a sad thing to have to go through, right? Like if something that meant so much to you, because that's the religion that you practice is taken away from you, that's kind of, that would be hard on me. So for them though, there was a really brave priest and his son, and they bravely took back this temple. And they said, no, we are going to practice our religion because our religion of Judaism means a lot to us. And so Hanukkah is an eight day celebration to kind of remember that period when they did take back their temple and kind of say, no, we are going to celebrate our own, our own faith and pride. So that's really awesome to me. Um, it's also called the Festival of Lights because of the menorah, or it's also called the Hanuki, Hanukkah, sorry, the Hanu Hanukkah, because over the eight nights of Hanukkah, um, families light each one of these candles. You might be thinking, okay, well, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine candles there. This candle in the middle is what's used to light each of these candles over the eight nights. And this is called a, a Hanukkah or a menorah. Menorah is like the standard version of this uh, holiday version of it. So, this is a really fun celebration. They um they do gifts, they have yummy food. They do gifts over the span of the eight nights rather than like one big celebration of gifts at the end. They kind of spread that out for themselves. But they also kind of play games. They do lots of fun things. One of the games that they play is called dreidel. Mrs. Young had to carve her own dreidel uh, because she could not find one at the store, sadly. But this is a dreidel. It's kind of like, uh, if you've ever seen a spinning top, it's like a version of that, but except it has, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it has Hebrew letters on it. And so you would spin the dreidel using the spinner at the top. You spin the dreidel and then whatever it lands on, that Hebrew letter would tell you what your next direction would be. And it's kind of like a game that they would play. They'd actually play this game while they were, um, outlawed. So while they weren't allowed to play, while they weren't allowed to practice being Jewish, uh, if they had guards coming by and they were sneaking and they were trying to read um, the Torah, which is the Jewish writing, if they had guards coming by and they knew the guards were coming, they would pretend to just play the dreidel instead. So it was kind of like a, uh, like a sneaky way of being able to practice the religion still, even when it was outlawed. So the dreidel is something that they play every year during Hanukkah as kind of a remembrance of that of what they had to do to be able to still celebrate the religion. So basically it's just like a spinning top game, Mrs. DeYoung's. It's very, very uh, tedious, but you would spin it 
I'll pick my, my paper here. You spin it and then it lands on one of these symbols and then one of these symbols tells you what your next action would be. It's a very cool game. Um, we're going to actually sing a song about this because dreidel is kind of one of the more fun um, like children's part of Hanukkah. So let's do that. This song is called I Have a Little Dreidel. Now dreidels are usually a lot fancier than this. Um, Mrs. DeYoung had to kind of makeshift one, but they can be made out of many materials. Mrs. DeYoung's is made out of foam. So this is the ball that it was before and then Mrs. DeYoung carved it to look like a dreidel with four sides and then kind of like a tip so it can spin. And then I've got a little straw sticking out of it at the top to make my little spinner. But it just started as this foam ball. So Mrs. DeYoung's is made out of foam. But typically, a dreidel is going to be made out of like wood or clay or um, lots of different materials like that plastic if you're getting it at like, like a big store like Walmart probably. But um, there's lots of different ways to make a dreidel. So this All right, fifth grade, welcome to our new artist of the month. If you've had me in person already, you know that last month we focused on the Beatles, which is a really cool rock group from Europe, the UK. But this month, uh, especially if you haven't been with me yet, we're gonna be focusing on Stevie Wonder. And Stevie Wonder is a very special musician. He is still alive today, still alive and kicking. He's doing great. And he is actually from Michigan, from Detroit, Saginaw area. So he's very special to us Michiganders. And he's very special for another reason too. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, we're gonna read like two chapters this week and then every day after, um, your video you're gonna go listen to a song by him our song of the day today is superstition um it's kind of it almost has like a halloweeny feel to it not really but just like a little bit i think i've seen it in like a scooby-doo movie before you've probably heard it before in some context because it's just like a very very popular song so let's learn about our artist of the month stevie wonder chapter one who is stevie wonder or i guess the intro chapter Steve Lynn Judkins walked into the Motown Record Corporation in Detroit one day in the fall of 1961. He was there to audition for the studio bosses. Every day, other musicians came to Motown for the same reason. They all hoped to become stars. Stevie, as he was called, was just like them, except that he was only 11 years old and he was blind. Stevie started off by playing the piano. Then he banged on the drums for a while. He was wearing dark sunglasses indoors, but plenty of young musicians thought wearing shades like that looked cool and Stevie found his way around the instruments with no problem. Not everyone in the room realized that Stevie was blind. At first, Barry Gordy, who was the main man in the charge of Motown, didn't think Stevie was such a big deal. Gordy had already had enough of people who could play the piano and the drums. But after playing the drums, Stevie sang for a bit, and then he played the harmonica. Gordy was impressed that not only could Stevie do so many things well, but he did them with a wide smile on his face. Stevie was clear clearly enjoying himself, and everyone, around him was having a good time too. Gordy decided then and there that he was gonna sign Stevie to a recording contract. So as we just heard, Stevie Wonder is actually a blind musician, which means that he is playing all these keys without being able to see them. So he has to just feel them with his fingers because he can't see, which is a super duper awesome feat. That was more than 50 years ago. Today, Stevie is known around the world by his stage name, Stevie Wonder. He is a groundbreaking musician who has entered millions of fans who has entertained millions of fans, performed in front of world leaders, and worked hard for social change. He has earned the highest honors awarded to composers, singers, musicians, and citizens of the United States. And he has done it all with that same positive attitude and wide smile on his face that he had in the Motown studio that day in 1961. Chapter one, difficult beginnings. As we can see, little Stevie there struggling to see, but he's playing the drums. Music had always been a big part of Stevie Wonder's life. He was still a baby when he began pounding on bongo drums in his crib. When he was a little boy, he grabbed whatever spoons he could find in the kitchen and played on the pots and pans. When he was about five years old, a barber on the street gave him a harmonica and Stevie learned how to play it. Stevie never had any formal lessons, but he always seemed to know how to make music with any instrument that was available. Stevie was born as Steveland Hardway Judkins on May 13th, 1950 in Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw is about, mm, about 45 minutes north of us in Fenton. So it's about, if you look at a mitten, if Fenton's here, Saginaw is like right here. His mother's name was Lula Hardway. 
and his father's name was Calvin Jenkins. Stevie had two older brothers, Melton and Calvin Jr. Two more brothers, Larry and Timmy, and a sister, Renee, were born in later years. So that was five brothers and sisters. That's a lot. Stevie was born about six weeks earlier than expected. He probably was not blind when he was born. But when babies are born too early, they usually remain in the hospital until they are strong enough to go home. The hospital puts them in an incubator, which is supposed to keep conditions for them to be healthy. Stevie was in an incubator for more than a month. So when Stevie was born, you can see this little machine. That's baby Stevie in there. He was born too early, so they put him in this big incubator machine to keep him healthy for that month before he, while he got strong enough to be like a newborn baby all on his own. He seemed healthy in every way, except that the doctors did notice that his eyes didn't seem to respond to movement or light. They had not developed properly. Naturally, Lula was upset at the news. She begged the doctors to do something to restore Stevie's sight, but there was nothing they could do. He was permanently blind. Stevie couldn't see, but his hearing was incredible. When he was growing up, his siblings would drop a coin on the table. What is it, Stevie? They would ask. A dime, Stevie would reply correctly. But he would drop another coin. How about that one? They would ask. A quarter, Stevie would say. Right again. Stevie's hearing was so good that he could identify a coin simply by the sound it made. So basically, like, let's say if I had a pencil and a pen here. Sorry, I don't mean to reach in front of you guys. I have a pencil here and I have a marker here. Stevie could tell by the sound of what I dropped, whether that was a pencil or a marker. Just by sound, not even by like looking at it, which is crazy, that's crazy good hearing. And when you lose one of your senses, whether that is like sight or taste or hearing, usually your other senses will become a lot stronger to make up for that. So because Stevie was blind, his sense of hearing became a lot stronger. See, Stevie was too so tuned into sounds that it naturally he was drawn to music. It started with bongo drums in his crib. Stevie's father gave those to him. Calvin Sr. had been a pretty good musician himself, and he taught Stevie songs and encouraged his son to love for music. However, Calvin didn't have a regular job. He would sometimes leave the family for long periods of time. No one knew where he was or what he was doing. When Calvin wasn't around, he wasn't very nice to Stevie's mother. Lula thought that maybe a bigger city, that maybe in a bigger city, Calvin could find a job and things would be better. So when Stevie was four years old, the family moved about 100 miles to Detroit on the eastern edge of Michigan. So they lived in a Saginaw, which like I said, is kind of right here, almost in like that little crevice of the thumb. And then they moved all the way down here to Detroit, which is kind of almost really close to Canada. We live in Fenton, which is about right here, kind of like right in the middle there of Saginaw and Detroit. Calvin joined Lula and the kids in Detroit, but he didn't change there. He still didn't work at a regular job and he still went away sometimes. Lula found a good job though. Every morning she would get up before the sun rose to work at a fish market. It was hard work, but she had a plan. At the time, the family lived in an apartment that wasn't in a nice part of town. Lula wanted a better life for her kids, so she saved a little bit out of each paycheck and stuffed it under a mattress to hide it from Calvin. When she had enough money, she made the first payment on a house in a good neighborhood. She moved there with her children, leaving Calvin behind. So as you can see, there's Lula, which is Stevie's mom, stuffing a bunch of coins under the mattress that she could save up to get away from his dad. Because he wasn't a very nice man. And next week, we will read about chapter two, a gift for music. So I want you to go check out um, Superstition. Superstition, that's our first Stevie Wonder song of the week. It's a really good, it's kind of got like a funk vibe to it. I would say that Stevie Wonder is kind of like a R&B kind of funk, kind of like mi mix, mixes and matches uh, genres based on kind of the year that we're in, kind of the uh, vibe, the feeling that we're in at that time period. So he's very versatile as an artist. The song that we'll listen to today is very funk. You'll think very 70s, like almost disco kind of feeling. So I really hope that you enjoy it. You've probably heard it before. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.